Hi, this is Nathan from Teach the Table, and today I'm teaching you how to play Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar is a team game where each team controls opposing submarines separated on the table by these dividers. The winner is the first team to destroy their opponent's ship by inflicting four damage. The game can be played in turn-by-turn -turn mode where each team gets as much time as they like, or in a real-time mode where chaos ensues and the game really shines. This isn't a simple move and shoot game as each team member is going to be playing a very different role on board the ship, starting with the leader, who's the captain. The captain first chooses a secret location to start out on the map, and all he has to do is to announce out loud which direction the ship is going to head. He has to avoid any islands or avoid crossing the path that he's already gone on, and he'll have to wait for the okay from his teammates before he can make another move. Simple enough, it seems at first. However, each team also has a radio operator who's listening to the captain of their opponent ship, and they're documenting each move that they make. They'll be moving this transparent sheet around the map as they go, hoping to locate a section of the map where the path fits, where it doesn't go through any island spots. That could potentially reveal where their ship is at the moment. The first mate is in charge of preparing the weapons, listening devices, and other actions that the ship can use to their advantage. Each time the captain announces a course of direction, the first mate will mark one space on one of these gauges. Once a gauge is completely full, they announce to the captain, Torpedo ready, for example. Once that system's been activated, then they can erase that gauge and start over again. The first mate also keeps track of the damage that their ship has taken up on the top there. The last role is the engineer, who's responsible for tracking the various damaged parts of the ship. Each time the captain announces the course of direction, the engineer will cross off one of these symbols under that direction. So under north, he might cross off that. These symbols correspond to the gauges on the first mate sheet. And if any symbol of a particular system is crossed off, that system can't be used at this time, even if the first mate has it completely ready. If you look closely, you can see some of the symbols are connected by a colored line, indicating that they're all on the same circuit. If all symbols on one circuit are completely crossed off like so, then this, that circuit will get to self-repair and the engineer can erase all the marks. So the engineer should be trying to tell the captain which direction they need to go to allow self-repairing to happen. These radiation symbols on the bottom are a hazard, but nothing will happen with them until every single one of them are crossed off like so. Once that happens, the engineer will announce that the ship takes one damage and all marks on all of these symbols get to be cleared off. Similarly, if all symbols of a single direction are crossed off, the ship will also take one damage and then all marks get to be erased again. So just to reiterate, the captain will announce a direction they want ahead and he needs to wait for an okay from the first mate and from the engineer that they've done their jobs before they can make one more movement. At some point, the ship will either have too many breakdowns or won't be able to travel any further on the map. So the captain should announce that he wants to surface. This process will heal all breakdowns and allow the captain to remove all previous moves from the map. He first has to tell the enemy team what sector of the board he is in, so they have a chance to come and rush into your area. In a turn-by-turn -turn game, the surface ship will be paralyzed while the enemy can make three moves in a row. If you're playing in real-time mode, the opposing ship can continue moving at will, while the surface ship has to complete a minigame before being able to dive again. Starting with the engineer, they have to draw a line around one section of the ship here without going outside the lines, and then initial that section. Then they're going to pass it to the next crew member who's going to repeat the process and so on until the ship is completely full. Once it's filled up, they're going to pass it to the opposing team's engineer to check out that it's been done correctly. And once they get the all clear from them, they get to erase all the breakdowns on the ship, clear the ship up here, and the captain gets to remove all the lines of where they had gone, but keeping note of where they're at at this moment. The team members on a surface ship can't do anything until this minigame is completed. So while the enemy ship is still moving, the radio operator is going to be trying to memorize where the team may have gone so they can mark these down later once their ship is back underwater. Once the captain announces dive, then play will resume as normal. We mentioned the gauges for each system on the first mate sheet, but let's see how those work. The first mate's able to use the drone and sonar actions only, so just the green actions. But the captain can use any of these systems as long as they are ready. After the captain or first mate confirms with the engineer that a system has no breakdowns, then they can use that system. In real time mode, they announce stop and they raise a fist to indicate to all players that they have to drop everything and listen while they announce what system is being used. Two systems can't be used simultaneously, so the captain has to move at least once before being able to use another system. A torpedo can be launched to move up to four spaces from its ship. The captain will announce the coordinates and the opposing team's captain will announce how much damage they take. If the torpedo impacts directly with their ship, 
they will take two damage or if they are only adjacent to where that is, they will take one damage. A mine can be dropped on any space adjacent to their sub by marking an M on it, but it can't be on a space that they previously moved through and they won't be able to move through their own mine in the future. The captain simply announces mine dropped and marks the location secretly and play resumes. A mine can be detonated later by announcing where it was and damage occurs the same way as with the torpedo. Keep in mind that your torpedoes and your mines can damage your own ships, so use them wisely. A drone will allow you to ask the enemy team if they're in a specific numbered sector. After a truthful yes or no, then play resumes. Sonar forces the opposing captain to announce two pieces of information relating to their location, one true and one false. The information given can be the sector, the row, or the column, but it can't be two pieces of the same type of information, so they couldn't give you uh, sector four and sector six, for example. Using silence lets your own submarine move up to four spaces in a straight line. Of course, not crossing islands or your own previous path. The first mate and the engineer will still need to mark off one thing on their sheets, so you should indicate to the engineer secretly by pointing which direction they have gone so that they know which area they need to make a breakdown in. If you're playing with scenarios, there's also an additional action you can take down here, and it could take either four or six marks before it gets activated, but it's not used in the basic game. That's all there is to Captain Sonar. The game does come with multiple different maps as well, with different scenarios to give you some variability to the game, but the key to this is going to be communication, especially if you're playing in real-time mode, because everyone's going to be talking, trying to get their point across, and you're going to need to try to communicate effectively while still being able to hear the opposing team's movements. Thanks for watching Teach the Table, and don't forget to have fun!